Hello friends and welcome to another video. Today we're doing another recommendation video. We're doing part two of my sapphic graphic novel recommendations. If you haven't seen the first video, I will link it up in the cards and down in the description box below. It was a lot of fun to film and I actually filmed this video directly after filming that one, but the footage, I just wasn't happy with it. So I wanted to refilm it. And as you can tell, months have gone by and I have not done that, but we're doing it now. I can reach for a well-worn book to give me an escape. My brain is a little bit not as remembering of like what exactly happened. So I wrote down any content warnings I could think of or find that someone had put on Goodreads. But I will say there are definitely some that I missed and there are two that I don't have anything for. Like I don't remember really at all what any of the content warnings would be. So if you have read these books and you know the content warnings for them, please put them down in the, in the comments down below. Um, if not, just proceed with caution, I guess. The first one we're gonna talk about is one that I do not have physically, and that is Motor Crush Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Brendan Fletcher and Cameron Stewart. The reason I say Volume 1 and Volume 2 is because Volume 1 ends on a cliffhanger and you are definitely going to immediately wanna pick up Volume 2. <laughs> but this is a really fun, sci-fi like futuristic graphic novel where we're following our main character domino who races motorcycles for like money and whatever there's something called the crush on the market that can like soup up machines and make them go like even faster and it also causes like weird stuff and um yeah it's just really amazing the main character in this is sapphic at one point you meet domino's ex-girlfriend who is um perfection personified i mean i love domino herself but like I don't even, I, I don't remember her name because it's, I only remember Domino's name because it's the description. That is Motor Crush Volumes 1 and 2 by Brendan Fletcher and Cameron Stewart. I'm pretty sure there's a Volume 3, I just haven't read it yet. I don't think it was on Hoopla when I was reading Volumes 1 and 2, which is like what I read these on, which I get through my library. If you're in the United States, your library might use Hoopla and I definitely recommend looking. They have a ton of graphic novels and stuff. I'll also link that down below. We're going to talk about Snapdragon by Kat Less. This is amazing and adorable it's such a weird like i hate using the word quirky but it really is it's just like a weird like magical realism almost world and everything about this is just so great i mean it's this old woman who everyone says is a witch but as soon as, but she doesn't really believe that this woman is a witch when she meets her she finds out that she's actually just into taxidermy and everything so everyone just thinks she's weird and assumes automatically that she's a witch Although Snap, our main character, by the way, is called Snapdragon, and she, her nickname is Snap. We love her a lot. Follow Snap um, through her adventures. And I don't want to give too much of this away because I feel like it was just so much fun to experience. And it's just really, really wholesome and cute. I will say our main character, Snap, is not sapphic. However, our old woman friend, Witch, is. And there's a really interesting little romance subplot in here that I just really enjoyed. It really warmed my heart. There's also, um, Snap's best friend is trans, so there's a little bit of that in here. I will say there's one scene where there's, like, some transphobia from some kids at school, but it is dealt with right away, and everyone else in the story is just loving and accepting, and it's just so great. Snap's mother is just so kind. This had so much great queer rep. It was so good. It had some adorable moments. Yeah, so this is Snapdragon definitely recommend this. This is also a middle grade book, so it would be good for all ages, really, I'm pretty sure. Next, we have two books by the same author. One is a memoir and one is sci-fi. So the memoir one is Spinning. This is by Tilly Walden. This is um, a very long memoir and the color, um, the colors are very like purple, white, and yellow. They're very interesting and very well done. And this is about Tilly Walden's life as a competitive figure skater. It talks about how every morning she would get up and go to the rink and then her weekends were competitions and she still had to do school and everything and also through all of this she is realizing that she likes girls and it's really hard for her this was so well done and well written and the art is beautiful i just i really love this this i read a few years ago now i think when it first came out and it's still just i just remember being like blown away by it um i will say content warnings i have my notes down here that's why i'm looking down Content warnings for depression, sexual harassment, and homophobia. So I will say this is a very intense memoir. Graphic memoir, obviously, because we're talking about graphic novels. But it is so worth the read if you can. It is so good and just the art is beautiful. And now that I'm talking about it, I want to reread it. Honestly, all of these books, now that I'm talking about them again, I want to reread them immediately. 
And next, also by Tilly Walden, in a completely different direction, we have On a Sunbeam, which is a sci-fi takes place in space book. And I will say that this confused me at a few points. But at the end, I just loved it. It blew me away. Almost every character in this is a woman, and almost every character in this is queer in some way. We have one non-binary character, and there might be like one guy, just all queer people, just being queer and being wonderful. And there's multiple sapphic love stories in this, multiple sapphic people, obviously, as they're like, this cast is like 90% women, which, you know, we love to see. I don't know if I can explain the plot of this at all. It's just so weird and complicated, but it's so, it's so well done. I read this all in one sitting and it is a thick graphic novel, but I picked it up and I just could not put it down and the art is gorgeous. I'm gonna try and show it to you the best I can. But the art in here is gorgeous, all of the colors and Tilly Walden is definitely good with this like limited color palette idea. Um, and it's just, I think this is like the most colors on one page. It's just so well done and I love all of these characters. And I'm gonna stop gushing about this, but you should definitely read this. It is sci-fi, it is on a sunbeam by Tilly Walden. And the content warnings are bullying, misgendering, violence, blood, and murder. <laughs> um, I will link a review down below that I took this from because I could not think of anything. <laughs> Even though I knew that there was a lot in here that could be potentially triggering, I just, my brain just didn't think of any of it, so. Finally, we have Meal by Blue Delacuante and Zole Ho. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I looked it up and I tried, but my memory is awful. <laughs> my pronunciation is pretty terrible on everything not just like names. This is a really interesting graphic novel. I wasn't sure about it when I picked it up and I actually picked it up in Canada at a queer bookstore because it just sounded so interesting. I'm just gonna read you the first sentence on the back because I think it explains everything very well. Yaro is a young chef determined to make her mark on the cutting edge of cookery with her insect-based creations. And this does have a sapphic love story subplot in it, but it's mostly about our main character really like just loving cooking and like loving the food she's making and yes she cooks with insects and everything and at first I was like I don't know if I could get past the texture and maybe I couldn't I don't think I've ever eaten anything with like bugs in it I'm, I know I've eaten like products of bugs like dye a lot of dye is from bugs and stuff this is mostly about her wanting to just like talk about this part of her history like her people have been eating bugs for years and there are many many cultures where people eat bugs regularly in the food it's a normal everyday part of life and I knew that, but I didn't really like know that until I was reading this and it was just so interesting, so well done, so intriguing. It's just like, the thing about this is that our main character, Yaro, um, our main character, Yaro, really loves cooking and that is the main thing that comes through, through all of this. And it's just so much fun to read and the little sapphic love story is also great. Um, our main character, sapphic, and she starts having like a little flirtation thing and it's just, so cute it adds that like little extra thing to the story although I will say even without that little romance subplot I probably would have really enjoyed this because it's just so well done the art style is pretty it's all black and white but I also really liked it I'm gonna try and show you some yeah so that is meal I definitely would also recommend this because this is a recommendation video. I gotta stop saying that. Anyway, these are the graphic novels I talked about, including Moda Crush, Volumes 1 and 2. Obviously, I would recommend all of these. If you have any sapphic graphic novels or sapphic books in general that you would like to recommend me, I am always open. Please leave them in the comments down below. Let me know. If you've read any of these, let me know your thoughts on them. I would love to talk about them with you. If you're new here, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. I hope you are well and safe and having a great day. Life before death radiance. She came out of her shell and now I just can't focus. Is this how it feels to be struck by lightning? Head over heels and I can't stop falling. I lost my courage. I've been disarmed. Then she cast a